It has been quite some time since I have made a YouTube video geared towards my beginner and early intermediate saxophone playing friends, so today is the day. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you five really common mistakes that beginner saxophone players make and how to fix them. Make sure you stay tuned until the end for a bonus tip. The first thing that we need to talk about which can wreak havoc on a beginner saxophone player is the reed. Reeds can cause so many different problems in the beginning. So you have two basic different types of materials that a saxophone reed can be made of. You have a synthetic reed, which is what I prefer, and you have cane reeds. I always recommend for beginners to start off with a synthetic reed. And the reason for that is synthetic reeds are consistent. They're the same from one reed to the next. When you're using a cane reed, you're going to get a box of 10. If you're an alto player, a box of five. If you're a tenor player, I have no idea why tenor players only get five reeds. It doesn't really make any sense. But out of those 10 reeds in your alto sax box of reeds, you might have three of them that play really well, another three that play okay-ish to pretty good, and then three or four that don't play well at all. When you're a beginner, you're not really good at figuring out the game, is it me or the saxophone reed? So I always recommend for beginner saxophone players to use synthetic reeds. Now, saxophone teachers are very opinionated when it comes to reeds, so I'm sure there are plenty of saxophone players out there who would disagree with me, but if you want to make your life really easy, start off with a synthetic reed. Now, the next thing that we need to talk about when it comes to a reed is the size, which actually isn't the right way to describe a reed. We don't call it a reed size, we call it a reed strength, because what that number means is the density of the reed. In other words, how easy or difficult it is for the reed to vibrate. So when you're talking about a reed size or strength, you're talking about the density of the cane, or in this case, the synthetic material. Uh, so as a beginner saxophone player, you want to start off with a softer reed. You want to start off somewhere between a 2 and a 2.5. If you start off with a harder reed, like a 3 or a 3.5, you're not going to sound good, it's going to be more difficult to play, and you might not even be able to get a sound out. So as a beginner sax player, you're going to want to start off with a 2 to a 2.5 strength reed. Now here's a little disclaimer. I personally play a Leger American Cut 2.25. So a lower strength reed doesn't necessarily mean that it's just for a beginner. It all depends on your gear. So don't think that as you get better, your reed strength has to increase. Again, it's all a variable in the type of gear that you are playing. But as a beginner, you want to start off on the softer side of a 2 to a 2.5. Now that you know a little bit about reeds, let's talk about the easiest way to put it on the mouthpiece. So what you want to do, I always put my neck on, I put the, the mouthpiece on my neck so I have more to grab on. You have the ligature on the mouthpiece, you want to slide that up and then slide the reed down below the ligature from above, slide it down. You don't want to slide the tip from underneath because the tip is super fragile, and if you break it, you're going to have to replace it. So you want to slide the ligature up a little bit and then slide your reed down, just like that. Now let's talk about where the reed should be placed on the mouthpiece. So this is really important, and this trips up a lot of beginner players, so this is something you really want, to, really want to pay close attention to. When you put your reed on the mouthpiece, at the tip of the reed, at the very top of the reed, you want to see a little tiny sliver of your mouthpiece above the tip of the reed. This is super important. That's going to get the correct amount of air going into the saxophone and your reed vibrating correctly. If you mess this up, you're going to have a really tough time getting a good sound on the saxophone. So you want to have a really thin sliver of mouthpiece line above your reed on your mouthpiece. So there's just a little tiny line. And this is what it sounds like when your reed is in the perfect position. Now, if you put your reed on the mouthpiece and you leave a really big gap between the tip of the reed and the tip of the mouthpiece, it's going to be really hard to play and it's going to sound just terrible. Take a listen. <laughs> I 
Like the air doesn't know where to go, the reed doesn't know what to do, nothing is in the right place, so it just sounds terrible. Reed placement is super important. Now, if I have the opposite problem, meaning I put the reed way above the tip of the mouthpiece, so the reed's sticking out past the tip of the mouthpiece, that is gonna put you in squeak and squawk city and sound awful. That's awful. That's just awful. So that's what happens when your reed is not in the correct place. You wanna have a small sliver of mouthpiece above the tip of your reed. That's gonna make the reed vibrate correctly. It's gonna put the right amount of air in the saxophone, and it's gonna give you a really great chance at getting a good sound. Reed placement is very important. Beginner and early intermediate saxophone players, let me know in the comment section what you have struggled with the most in getting started on your saxophone journey. Now that you know about perfect reed placement, let's talk about the embouchure. The embouchure is the fancy musical term for the way your mouth goes around the mouthpiece. So it's pretty basic. There are just three main things you need to think about. First is you want your lower lip over your teeth. You want the pink fat part of your lip over your teeth like this. You don't want to swallow your lip like this. You don't want the skin there. You want the fat pink part of your lip uh, covering your teeth like that. Then your top teeth just go on the mouthpiece and your corners press in firmly. Now you don't wanna squeeze, but you wanna have a little bit of pressure just to keep everything in place. So we have the lower lip over the, teeth, over the bottom teeth, the top teeth on the mouthpiece, and your quarters pressing in a little bit to give you firm pressure to hold the mouthpiece and the saxophone in your mouth. Embouchure is pretty simple, but there are some common mistakes. Sometimes uh, students will try to double lip. In other words, take their uh, top lip and put it over their teeth. Don't do that. Uh, sometimes they try to pull their corners out. Uh, that's not very effective and that doesn't sound good either. So you want your corners in. And sometimes people bite. You don't want to apply pressure on the reed because when you apply pressure on the reed, the reed closes off. When the reed closes off, you get no sound or a bad sound on the saxophone. So bottom lip over the teeth, top teeth on the mouthpiece, corners pressed in. This next thing is something I have corrected in tons and tons and tons of lessons. And that is the amount of mouthpiece that you actually take into your mouth. So if you take a look at your mouthpiece from the side and you close one eye, you're gonna see that there's a little gap between your reed and the mouthpiece up until about right here, then they touch. So this section where there's the gap is called the tip opening. The tip opening is actually exactly where you want to place your embouchure on the mouthpiece. So you want your bottom lip to go right to where the reed hits the mouthpiece and then your top teeth of course go right on top of that. That's going to give you a really good sound and let the correct amount of saxophone reed vibrate. And it'll sound like this. If you take in too little mouthpiece, so instead of being here, you're here, you're gonna have a really small sound. Uh, you're not gonna project and it's just gonna sound whiny like your saxophone is dying. I can't tell you how many times I've had a student come into a lesson and play their first scale and sound like that and we immediately fix it just by taking in more mouthpiece. Uh, so if you have a really thin whiny sound, chances are you're not taking in enough mouthpiece. Now, you don't want to take in too much mouthpiece because then that's going to give you the opposite problem. It's going to let the reed vibrate too much and you won't be able to control it and it'll just sound harsh and really bad. Mm, that is painful. So you want to make sure you are taking in the correct amount of mouthpiece. So if you are a beginner or early intermediate saxophone player and your sound just is not good and you can't figure out how to make it sound better, the first thing you want to do is check your reed placement. The next thing you want to do is make sure that your embouchure is correct 
And the third thing you want to do is make sure that you are taking in enough mouthpiece. If you do those three things, even as a beginner or early intermediate saxophone player, you should be able to get a consistent, solid sound. If you're watching a video on common beginner saxophone player mistakes, I'm guessing you're pretty early on in your saxophone journey. So I'd like to take a minute to invite you to come check out the Scott Paddock Sax School. In my sax school, I have courses dedicated to every part of playing the saxophone. And one of the things I specialize in is teaching beginner and early intermediate saxophone players. So in my beginner pathway course, I start off at the very beginning with getting your saxophone out of the case and teach you everything you need to know to get your first sounds, get your first notes, get your embouchure and your tonguing and your mouth in the right position, your fingers in the right position, how to read music. You start learning some new songs. You start feeling comfortable playing the saxophone. And then I take you right into the early intermediate pathway. And that is where you start to learn scales and more complex songs by like the Beatles and Stevie Wonder. And you just really get a great foundation in the beginning of your saxophone journey. So if that sounds like something that you are interested in checking out, I'll put the link in the video description below. Another big problem that beginner and early intermediate saxophone players have is that they don't separate notes with their tongue. So if you're gonna play a note several times, for example, if I play a B several times, I need to separate that note, each of the notes, by using my tongue. That sounds like this. You can hear me separating that note. If I don't use my tongue, it's just a long held note. So you need to use your tongue to separate that note. I can't tell you how many times I've heard a saxophone player early on in their saxophone journey separating notes with their air like this. So giving each note its own puff of air. That is not the way you separate notes. You separate notes with your tongue. Your tongue comes up and hits the reed, closes off the reed so the air can't go in. That separates one note from the next. Now, I just did an example where I was repeating the same note, but obviously you can also tongue notes that are not just the same note. So if I was playing a G scale, I could tongue each of the notes in a G scale. Just so you know, when you don't tongue a note, that is called a slur. A slur is when you move from note to note without tonguing. When you're playing melodies or solos or anything on the saxophone, you're gonna use a variety of tonguing and slurring and different articulations. The way you attack or don't attack a note is called an articulation. So tonguing is the most basic kind and then slurring is then obviously the opposite of tonguing. So when you are articulating notes, you're gonna use a wide variety of different types of articulations. The last thing we're gonna talk about is hand position. When it comes to hand position, the first thing you wanna think about is no tension, tension free. You want your fingers to move really freely up and down like little hammers. You do not want tension in your hands like you're trying to grip the saxophone and, and press down those keys super hard, that's gonna slow you down, it's gonna hurt your wrist, and it's not gonna sound clean and smooth. This is something that uh, guys with really big hands, they tend to struggle with. Like They just automatically wanna push down the keys really hard. You don't need to do that. Really light, tension-free movement is what you want in your fingers. The next thing we wanna talk about when it comes to hand position is keeping your fingers close to the keys. You don't want your fingers going crazy when you are playing. You don't want to be flapping your fingers around like you're waving high to somebody. The further away your fingers are from the keys, the sloppier it's going to sound. So you want your fingers close to the keys at all times. And while we are doing an up-close view of my hands, the next thing that I tell students all the time is to make a C and then take that C and put it on the saxophone. That's gonna put you in really, really good hand position so that your fingers are acting like little hammers. Now, when you have that C, you want your wrist to be flat. You don't want a curve in your wrist. So with both of your hands, you can make a C and then put it right on the saxophone, and then you will have a really good hand position. And now for the bonus section. The absolute biggest mistake that beginner saxophone players make 
is they try to learn how to play the saxophone by watching YouTube tutorials. I'm a big fan of YouTube tutorials. I watch them to learn how to do things and I teach them all the time. But you're not gonna get really good at learning how to play the saxophone with just YouTube tutorials because they're not in order and you're gonna get conflicting advice. And the advice might not, might not even be correct by some of the people, or it might just be two different concepts of the same thing. So when it comes to learning, especially as a beginner, the best thing you can do is in-person lessons. If you can get a good teacher in person, that's gonna be great, especially in the beginning. So someone can watch what you're doing. They have their hands on, they can see where your hands are, where your mouth is, all of that kind of stuff. If you can't do in-person lessons as a beginner, then sign up for a course. I have a course in my sax school, the Scott Paddock Sax School, called The Beginner Pathway. And in that one, in that, in that course, I take you step by step, starting at getting the saxophone out of the case and putting it together and teaching you everything you need to know to get your first notes out and learn how to read music and play songs and all that kind of stuff. And it's all done in a step by step progression. When you are a beginner or early intermediate saxophone player, that's what you need. You need that structure of a step-by-step -step method that will help you have a lot of success early on in playing the saxophone. If you are going from YouTube to YouTube, you're really gonna struggle. So make sure that in the beginning, definitely in the beginning, you are following some type of step-by-step -step advice on getting the basics of the saxophone down. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you got some value out of the information I gave to you today, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up and click that bell for notifications.